Hey there everyone, Hitesh here and I make coding videos. Welcome to the challenge and the product that we are building as a SaaS. This is a part two in the series. In case you're watching this as just one video, that's fine. If you're watching it as a separate videos, that's also great. Let's continue with that. We also have a small target for this video. So if you can show some appreciation in the comment section, just 50 comments would be great appreciation in the comment section. So go ahead and share some love in that. What we're gonna do in this video? In this video, we'll create a fresh project in the next JS. We'll install a couple of utilities that are required like Zord, uh, Clerk, and work with that. I'll also walk you through how we can set up the sign up page. And if we'll get enough time, we'll do the sign in page as well, hopefully in this one. We'll not be focusing too much on the UI part. Our UI part will be taken care via the Daisy and the Tailwind itself. They're pretty good and decent to create the UI, but I'm pretty sure you can create more magical UI than me. Uh, but I'll leave that as a simple exercise for you. I'll be just focusing more on the functionality part. So let's go ahead. But still, it will be decent and will be good enough. And since we already have a reference of what we are about to build, it's really nice to work with that. So let's go up here. And what we're going to do is uh, really nice. Uh, let's go here. By the way, we'll be using Cloudinary, and as you can see, the visual engaging experience, they actually allows you to do so much. Not just squaring the video and circling it, they are actually doing and providing a lot of AI utilities to actually build so much solutions with that. If you go ahead and check out the developer, this is where they mention that, hey, we can do the content uh, aware crops, so all these things actually are real time. And you can see it does the content aware cropping, we'll be utilizing them and we'll be providing a lot of services like that. Uh, we have the AI generated powered uh, reviews and the previews as well. So we'll be using them as well. But first, let's go ahead and set up a fresh project and start that how we can actually use all these services, all these things and come up with together with the product itself. Let's go ahead and start with the Next.js project. I'll just go up here and we'll say, hey, let's go ahead and create a Next.js project and uh, what we should call this one as. So we're gonna call this one as uh, create next, install the following packages. Yes, please go ahead and install this. Uh, what do you want to call this project? I'm gonna call this one as Cloudinary SaaS, dash SaaS. I think that's a decent name. Uh, would you like to use TypeScript? Not sure, let's just use it. <laughs> You'll also learn a couple of more fun stuff in that. I do have a full-fledged TypeScript series on this channel. Go ahead and check it out if you haven't been aware of it. Linting, yes, give me linting. Tailwind CSS, definitely we need that. Uh, source directory, we probably don't need the source directory. We can just go ahead and directly work with the app itself. Uh, we'll keep things a little bit cleaner. Again, I'm a big fan of source directory, but let's try without this and see how it works. App router, definitely we want to use it. Uh, customize default, no, I don't want to customize it. And hopefully this is going to just install the things uh, by the time it does all the installation and makes my project ready. Uh, let me also show you a couple of things that we're going to be installing right away. So one is going to be the clerk. Clerk is a great and pretty easy user management thing that you can do. Of course, you would love to check the pricing first. So if you can see, there is enough for us to go ahead and try this out. Uh, 10,000 monthly active user. If you have that much user in your SaaS and it is paid like probably $10 a user, I think it's good enough that you can pay $25. But again, if you want to roll out your own auths as well, I do have a playlist for that as well. You can go ahead and check this out. Yes, I'll accept that. And there we go. It looks okay. And uh, let's just go ahead and go into the project. Uh, we're going to go ahead and say Cloudinary and Cloudinary SaaS. We'll just go in here, do a quick LS. Everything looks okay to me as of now. I'm going to go ahead and open up my code editor for this one. And uh, there we go. The code editor looks decent. And there we go. Yes, I do trust the author. And there we go. Looks decent. We have all the projects and everything up here. Package.json looks decent. We have all the dependencies, whole lot of things. Now let's go ahead and couple of stuff we want to do right away. First one, we want to implement the Daisy UI because it's going to make life a lot easier. So it clicks on how to use. We want to use Tailwind plugin, use CDN. Now we'll go with the Tailwind plugin. NPM is good enough. We're going to install it as a dev dependency because it's actually built on top of the Tailwind, so we don't need to do much. I'll open up my code editor and let's go ahead and fire it up. So Daisy, latest, there we go, looks good. And once we're done with this, then we go ahead into uh, CommonJS. No, it's not CommonJS. It's actually a Tailwind config, so uh, JavaScript module. So which one you are using? I guess we are using not the CommonJS. We'll be using just like this, so we'll be going with the Daisy UI. 
Again, depends on which one you are using. All you got to do is just say that, hey, we want to require this uh, plugin up here. And we can also mention the theme of it. So let's go ahead and do this. I'll just go ahead and start with that. Looks okay. I'll go into Tailwind config. Tailwind config, yep. Here it is, plugin. And here, what we're going to do is we're going to just directly require it. So I'm going to go ahead and say I want to require. And the require is Daisy UI. That's it. I think that should do the job. Uh, one more thing that we can do once we are in here, we can also mention the Daisy UI themes as well. You can do that simply by saying that, hey, I want to have a Daisy UI just like this. And in here, we can mention the themes theme and in the themes we can just go ahead and work like this not like this it's an array forgot that I'll show you where it is there we go themes just like this and we have dark I'll show you where that is so if you go into the docs you if you scroll this a little bit and there we go themes and open this up this is where it is themes and a daisy UI separated by did we have this daisy UI and inside this, we have a themes, light, dark, cupcake, whichever you want. There are so many themes. Even a forest theme is there. If you wish to have it dark, we'll just go with the dark. But with just one click and one configuration change, you can make the change in the whole of the application. I really like that. Uh, we'll go with the dark. So feel free to change and go with that. So we'll just go with this. And with this, we should be able to actually make the project up and running. So npm run dev should be the command. And now I can just go ahead and uh, copy and click this, copy this, and we can just paste this and enter this. And hopefully it should be up and running. So there we go. It's definitely a little bit different than what it's already, but it's built on top of uh, the Tailwind, so shouldn't do much of the stuff which are troublesome for us. All right, this part is all good. Now, we will come back onto this one. We'll create our projects and stuff. First, let's do the configuration. So we want to do the uh, clerk configuration. So let's go into the docs. And we want to go with the Next.js. So let's go up here. This one says, hey, you have to install npm clerk next, just like this. So copy this. And we'll just go ahead and open this up, close it for a second, and just install this one. We will be using it. I'll walk you through how the usage part works. Let's go up here. Then it says set up your environment. So we're going to go ahead and create a new uh, new file with the name of env.local. Uh, by the end, we will be publishing this as well. as So we'll be needing that. So I'll copy this. We will also install Prisma. We will work with the Prisma and customize solution for that. Uh, so we'll be requiring some stuff there as well. Right now, I'll just call this one as env.local. At the end of the project, we just need one .env file, call it as .env.local or .env.example, doesn't really matter. At the time of deployment, it should be just .env. Or in most of the application, you have to manually go there and add up your own uh, keys in the platform. So we'll be using that. But in this case, we'll just go ahead and copy this and we'll paste it up here. I'll set up my keys and everything later on. All you got to do is sign up and just add your keys. That's it. Now, the interesting part is it requires your own middleware. We will definitely work on middleware. Once we are done with the middleware part, we will be customizing our own middleware. It requires you to add this clerk provider onto wherever your uh, page is. So in, in our case, app layout.tsx, it needs to have this clerk provider. Uh, you can use its own default uh, pages. So clerk provides you the sign up page, sign in page and Google login and whatnot. We will be creating our own pages so that we can make it look a little bit like this. So this one looks better. And you will also learn the customization part as well. So let's go ahead and work with that. I'll just close this one. All we need to do is add uh, the clerk provider. So open up the app. And in this, we have this layout.tsx. Now this layout.tsx, uh, you don't need to do too much. Just one line of code, barely one line of code. And it can do much of the stuff. Let's go ahead and import this. This is the first line that we need. And we need this, copy this, uh, paste it up here. We don't need other buttons and stuff like that. So we can just remove that. All we need is a click provider. Now this provider needs to wrap up your entire application so that it can find out that where the user is actually logged in or not. The best place would be just wrap entire HTML uh, on top of this. So we'll be just saying that, hey, click provider, just like this and we can move this at the end of it. That's it. That is all that is required for this one. 
Now Clerk Provider doesn't work just automatically. It requires one more file which is known as middleware.ts. It actually gives you a whole lot of things in the middleware. We'll be configuring that, modifying it a little bit. So let's go ahead and add this. Let's just say middleware.ts. Now in case you are confused with that, go ahead and always recommend look for the docs. So this is what it needs. All right, so we have created a middleware file. Now let's go ahead and walk into the, some of the documentation. We'll write our custom logic for that. It's super easy to work with that. So let me first go up here and you can see in the clerk Next.js, if you just go ahead and open this up, this is the clerk Next.js, and you can see there's so much more going on. If you just scroll on to the left part here, uh, this is where we can see our Node.js and there's somewhere here in Next.js as well. Probably I'm not able to see it. Did I miss it? Anyways, uh, what we're interested is in the auth object and the clerk middleware. The auth object is also interesting. In this, you can see we have so much of the parameters you can get. You can get the session ID, user ID, the current user's kind of current uni uni unique identifier, and you can grab more. Another one is the clerk middleware that we'll be using in this video. Uh, this is pretty easy. We can just copy this and just remove everything from the middleware and paste it up here. This is the basics of it. Now, once we are done with this part, now what we can do after this is write our own custom logic because the middleware doesn't work automatically. It just protects everything in the next JS. We don't want that. In our application, the scenario is pretty simple. Anybody can just go ahead and have this home page being easily accessible. And when they try to access some of the routes, then we actually protect them. And not only just home page, this is a video that's coming up from an API request, which is API slash video that we are going to be crafting. So there needs to be some API so that anybody can just walk in and download. This is how we want to structure our application. If you want to protect everything from just the login, you don't want anybody to access anything, then hey, this is going to work probably out of the box. We don't want that. I want you to show a customized implementation of it. So let's go ahead and have a customized implementation. Now, how we can do that? It's a little bit complex as a part, but I don't want to give everything for easy. Let's understand the uh, crazy part first, and then easy part you can do on your own. So Next.js, uh, especially the clerk, actually provides you this one thing, which is create a route matcher. And this is just an array in which you can match any routes. It's a kind of a secondary match being done by the clerk itself. It's not much dependent on the Next.js itself. You can do that on your own. But this is a better approach, I found it. So in this, we can just go ahead and mention that, hey, these are my public routes, these are my public API routes, and it can match it. It's not going to do anything, it's just going to match it, and you can later on use it. So let me just go ahead and say, this is my is public, 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 I can, is public route. In this, I'm going to just use this uh, create route matcher. And in this create route matcher, what I'm going to do is add up all the routes which I want that, hey, anybody should be able to access this. For example, I'll have this slash uh, sign in. This is going to be my one route. And I can just go ahead and end this so that stop yelling at me. So sign in is one. We'll also have sign up. Later on, you can just go ahead and come up and change the name as well. We'll also allow anybody to just walk in into the home page as well. And we'll also have one which is going to be slash home. That's how our application is designed. Anybody can come onto this slash home. If you have more page, you can just go ahead and add that as well. So that's my first public route. We also have public API route as well. So let's go ahead and create that is public API, public API route. Now in this exactly same stuff, we'll have just the API, but not just every API will have it here. We'll have just one which is slash API slash videos. Again, you can come back here and add more. This is just a route matcher. The, the name variable is public route. It doesn't really make any sense as of now, but it will very soon. The whole idea is we have the route matcher, which is being governed by the Next.js. You also get this route in the clerk middleware as well, but we want to have a matcher here as well. Now, if you go into the docs again, you'll notice that if you go ahead and scroll a little bit onto the clerk middleware, you are going to notice that this middleware can actually have this callback here, which has auth and request. So you can just write your customized logic in here, just like this. So go ahead and add this one. So first parameter is auth. The second one is request. And you can fire up a callback just like this. Now through the auth, you can take an access of user ID. So we're going to go ahead and say, I want to extract the user ID. And that user ID comes up from the auth. And again, this auth is a method just like that it comes. 
Now once we have this, we can also grab the current URL by this request that is the second parameter in this one. So let's just go ahead and say this is my current URL and that can grab from the request uh, next URL path name. Uh, no, we'll just grab the current URL just like this. So we'll just go ahead and say request dot get me a URL. Now the only problem with this is sometimes it works, it doesn't, sometimes doesn't work. So what we can do is we can wrap this up like this and say new URL. Now we are 100% sure this is always a URL. All right. Now once we have this, we would also like to uh, check whether somebody is accessing the home or is trying to accessing an API request. We can just grab it by using this current URL. So this current URL is the middleware. So this is a clerk middleware. This is a route matcher. This is a totally different thing. This is one. So from this current URL, I want to access that whether somebody is accessing the home or not. And it's super easy. You can go ahead and check this, this current URL. Uh, it has a property of path name and whether that path name is actually just like this slash home. And we can store this whole thing into a variable just like this. So we can just go ahead and say const. Since this is just checking, it will return me a Boolean field. So we can simply say is home page or we can simply say is accessing dashboard because our dashboard is home, as you can see. Uh, it could be different for different use cases, but, but our dashboard is home. So we can call it as is home page, or we can just call this one as something like is accessing dashboard. Or if dashboard is confusing to you, call it as home, whatever you like. Now, similarly, we can go ahead and access the API as well, that whether this is an API request or a home. This one slash home is definitely a page request, but we can just also say that this current URL, uh, if this current URL dot path name is starting with an API dot starts with, and if this one is starting with slash API, then definitely somebody is trying to access an API path or a request API. We can also store this is API request, and there we go. So now we can verify with this clerk middleware that the request that's coming up to us is actually trying to access the dashboard or is trying to access the home or is trying to access an API. Now based on this, three, these three parameters, which is user ID, somebody is trying to access home or not, and if somebody is trying to access an API or not, we can verify that what we want to do and what we don't want to do. If a request is coming up on the API, we can match it and check whether it's a part of a public API or not. If it's a, a type of access of the dashboard, we can just make sure if it is a part of the public route or not. And that's all what we have to do. And based on the user ID, we have it or we don't have it, we can make the uh, request that, hey, you can access this request or not. Let's go ahead and write a simple logic for that. We'll be using just, some people love to write directly complex if else request. I like to write it a little bit easier. So we'll just go like this. First of all, what we're checking is you have a user ID. So if user is logged in, that's what we are checking first. And then we are checking a couple of other things. If user is logged in and is trying to access a public route, but not the dashboard. So public route is trying to access, but not the dashboard. So, so public route he can access, but hey, public routes are like this. Uh, sign in and sign up. So we need to make sure he's not, if he's logged in, uh, then he should not be able to access uh, sign in and sign up. He is all the time should be redirected to the home itself. So he's logged in. And let's also check a couple of other things. And we'll check is public is public route, not the API route. So is public route. So is public route is request. We can just go ahead and check this. All right. So it's if the request is a part of this whole thing. And we can also check if he is not accessing the dashboard. If he's accessing the dashboard, that's it. Then he is on the home. But if he is not accessing that and he is not accessing is not is accessing the dashboard then in that case we would like to redirect him on to the home page so let's go ahead and say we would like to return you please go ahead and return to next response and the next response is going to be redirect and we will redirect you to the home i hope you get the logic pretty straightforward he is logged in and the path he's trying to access is uh, out of these ones and he's not accessing the dashboard. That means he's, it's a part of this, he's trying to access the sign-in. We don't want him to sign in because he's logged in. 
and uh, I can just go ahead and redirect him. I cannot actually remove this public route as a slash home. It would be much easier, but hey, you get the idea. You get the logic. We don't want it to, to access the sign in. So we're just checking. You are logged in. The part of the request is this, but hey, you are not on the home page. So go back, go back to the home page. All right. So this is the easy part that he is logged in. Now, what if he is not logged in? So let's go ahead and say not logged in. So in not logged in, let's first verify that. So if he is not logged in, no user ID. So if there is no user ID, then we have couple of cases to check. Let's check them one by one. First of all, if he is not uh, accessing is public route and the request is not part of a public route. Okay, he is not logged in and he's trying to access a resource which he uh, shouldn't be accessing uh, that anyways. And it's also not a public API. Okay, because see what's the logic? He's not logged in, that's okay. And he's trying to access social share. Surely I'll block him. But if he's uh, trying to access the home page, this at least the API should be accessible. So yeah, complex logic, I get that. So is public API route and that's a request. Is public API route and we have this request and there we go, should be okay. And did we remove it? All right, okay, my bad, I was trying. Is public API route there we go and we have a request just like this and we probably missed it all right this is messed up let me just rewrite it again i think there's some bracket issues happens all the time with these ai suggestion but it's okay so let's go ahead and say again it so if he's trying to access a part which is not the public api request public is public route, not a public route, and we're going to say not is public API route. So in that case, we'll just say, hey, you go ahead and log in. So in that case, let's go up here and have it like this. And in that case, I can just go ahead and redirect him. And say you go ahead and sign in. All right. Okay, so this one is public request route and all of that. Okay, now one more thing we need to check and we can check it up here. There we go. Let's go ahead and check one more thing. Yes, it's a little bit. So this time he is trying to access a public request. It's a part of public request is, but it's an API request. First, let's check is API request. So it's starting with the slash API. So it's a API, but it's not part of a public API. And is not part of a public API request. In that case, I'll return the request just like this. So there we go. Nice and easy. Let me write some comments so that it helps you out. All right. So I have added some of the comments for you so that it's easier for you to actually go ahead and grab the access of it and all of it. So as you can see, uh, this is the part which was easy, user was logged in. This is all the part where user is not logged in. If the user is not logged in and trying to access a protected route. So this is just route. We are not much worried about the API part in this one. This one is not uh, public route and not public protected API. So we'll say, hey, you log in. He's trying to access a resource like social share. So that is the, that case. And this is the part where the API request is there. This is a part of API request. That is means it is starting with slash API. So it's a API request. That is all we are checking. But this is not part of the public API. So there will be other APIs as well. So this is not part of a public API. Only one thing we have slash videos. So that is all what we are doing here. I hope this is fairly complex and you are enjoying this. Easy part, everybody does that. We do a little bit of the hard part as well. Otherwise, we go ahead and say next response and we just go ahead and say dot next so that request keeps on forwarding and we work with that. This is the most important part. Without this, you cannot actually have the middleware. Middleware means it executes in between and then transfer the request to other part wherever it needs to go. So we just have this one, little complex, but yeah, good enough. 
After that, we are simply going ahead and checking the matcher. I have a better version of it. Again, it's uh, just an easier version of this. This one is too much comments and stuff. This one is easier. It just goes ahead and check the routes on all the slash API. It also checks it on the all slash after that, whatever that is. Uh, so all the matcher. Matcher simply means it. the middleware needs to execute on all these routes. If you want certain routes where the middleware doesn't need to execute, just go ahead and say exclude it from the part of the matcher. That's it. All right, quite a lot of stuff. Uh, didn't expect it this to take this much of the time, but hey, we sometimes when we record and teach and tell, sometimes it takes more time. But we have configured Daisy UI. Uh, we haven't seen that yet, but it is configured. We have also configured the clerk. Now in the next video, hopefully we'll be writing our sign up page and sign in. And that's it. That is all done, all good. And go ahead and work with that. So I think this is the part that we are done with it. Now in the next video, hopefully we'll be working on the sign up and the sign in and not just only sign up, the customized sign up and sign in. That's it for this one. Let's go ahead and catch up in the next video.